Thanks for tuning in to the Loser Kid Pitball Podcast, episode 136. I am Josh Roop. With me, my co-captain as always. Scott Larson. And Scott. And Josh. Got an I, awesome. Okay, I, I oh, don't see your pinballs behind you. Where are you? Oh my, I'm at work. So <laughs> you can't yeah. even show off your new uh your new purchase. What did you get? I got Jaws, baby, and it is amazing. Okay. We, obviously, we did flipping the script on autism about two years ago. Yep. And the main reason we did it is because I uh, a, a company helped my child so much and he's doing great. Like, honestly, it's amazing the strides that he's made that um, they've actually told us he doesn't need to be in special ed classes for school and he's going into kindergarten. So to go into regular school, to be able to control his emotions, to be able to actually talk without screaming, it, it's amazing. And so we did that, right? Mm-hmm. And he loves Jaws because he loves sharks and he's every day dad can we play shark pinball he knows how to turn it on he goes down i've made him an account he's learned how to log himself in uh no i will not share (laughs) his account with you guys but uh no it's it's amazing it's 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 shark pinball even (laughs) just every day it's shark pinball shark pinball and i want to give a major thank you to to flipping out pinball for giving us this pinball machine not giving it i obviously had a you bought it from him yeah yeah but also, they were a major sponsor with flipping the script on autism. Even they they actually matched Stern in donations, and so Zach and Greg and Nicole are amazing people. You know, you don't buy a product just for the product itself; you buy it for the company and the company service. And the company service has been above and beyond with Zach. So, if yep. you're looking for the new John Wick or a Jaws Premium. Whatever it may be, hit up Zach and Nicole Mini at Flipping Out Pinball. Yeah. And if you're looking to make your Jaws pinball machine even cooler. Oh, yes. So today we have the the mind behind Stumbler Pinball. This is Davey. And if you have not checked it out, we've actually talked about it on the show before. Um, I have now I, I need to I, I need to increase my uh, my catalog of stumbler mods because right now i just have the tokyo neon sign but i that i have jaw uh godzilla and i also need to get the lollipop mod uh for the uh for the ufo i need to get the subway mod i need to get the noodle bar mod and he uh, okay these are not basic mods these, these are, are high, award <laughs> winning yeah, th- these are not le mods these are like signature edition mods and yes. and so we want to welcome davy from stumbler pinball onto the show because we want to talk about modding out your machine and making it look even better hey guys how you going that's uh that was quite an intro thanks yeah. scott <laughs> appreciate that and uh lovely story too about your your son josh um thank you i'm now going to call jaws shark pinball from now on yeah it's always shark pinball him. Yep. It's always shark pinball. <laughs> From now on, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did, are you guys? You're right. Hey, we're doing great. Now, yeah, we're grateful that you stayed up. Uh, this is uh, we're we're recording in the afternoon, but you are not, if yep. you can tell by the uh, the accent. You are not from the continental U.S., so so where are no, you from? I'm not from the continental U.S. Uh, I live in London, um, but I'm not from the U.K. either. I'm from Australia, so um, it's all very confusing. Uh, even uh, Rob, who I do a podcast with, at the same time, 10 o'clock uh, in the U.K., uh, 4 p.m. You know, Eastern Standard Time, even he gets confused about where I am from one day to the next. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm from Australia originally. And uh, moved over to London about 17 years ago, um, just on a, like a working holiday was what I was planning, planning to come over here, make a bit of money and then go home again. And then I think within about three weeks, I'd met my lovely wife and uh, yeah, 17 years later, here I am. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the first I've heard about your other podcast. So tell me about your other podcast. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah, it's not really a podcast. I don't know. Can we just call them all podcasts? I sure. find it so confusing calling them streams or pod- we just call it a podcast. But, okay. Um, yeah, it's with 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 Rob, with Rob from uh, Tet Pinball, uh, who does toppers, and uh, uh, it's called In Before the Lock. We do it uh, fortnightly uh, and stream stream it live stupidly um, on Twitch and YouTube and, and Facebook. And we, we, we basically just, uh, spend the whole time talking about the mod scene and all the new mods that have come out. Um, and we're sort of getting a bit, uh, deeper into, 
uh, talking about, um, I guess, what it, what it means to make mods and all the, the tools that you need at your disposal, all the skills, um, the companies that you can lean on in order to produce, uh, you know, 3D printing and circuit boards and that kind of thing. So where, you know, initially, initially it was just a way to uh, sort of promote uh, the scene and to promote other mod makers who might not have been getting as much exposure, um, that, you know, that they deserve. Um, and so we're still sort of doing that and trying to promote people as much as possible. We're also trying to uh, sort of use it as a platform to, uh, I guess, pull back the curtain on uh, what it means to, to make mods. And you've yeah. definitely went above and beyond on that. I mean, yeah. if you have not looked at Stumbler Pinball Mods, I know we talked about this last episode. Seriously, if you haven't went to his page, it's insanity. Like, this is just next level. I don't know where the heck you came up with these because thanks man thanks. holy crap <laughs> i'm not yeah. i'm not a, i'm not a believer in mods like you've converted me because i'm like mm -hmm. eh, like take them or leave them i always feel like you know the person that's selling their used pinball machine that has a list of mods they're about to hit you with well it's worth more because i have the because yeah. i put this rinky dink golf cart in it and you're like yeah. no yeah. you got it off of a cake top. Uh, i have a golf stuff. cart with an led uh that's attached <laughs> with alligator clips on the bottom <laughs> but yeah. your, yeah, your yeah, freaking yeah. mod ties in okay let's talk about buoy of death for a second okay yeah it ties into the actual jaws gameplay and relays information to you via a dmd screen on the mod itself yep. i don't know any other mod that does this this is <laughs> no. insane this is no. how how it's one of those situations where it's like you know like from jurassic park where they go uh, you know they didn't stop to think whether they should do it right <laughs> you know it's one of the, one of those kind of situations i think and uh Look, I've copped a little bit of flack for that DMD. You know, there's certain people uh, on Pinside who aren't impressed with that DMD. And look, in some ways, um, look, where that all came about was that uh, originally I was just going to replace the sign that's in Jaws because it's a pretty, it's a pretty, yeah. you know, it's not great yeah. that sign. Yeah. Um, and see arcades has done a, a pretty good update on that um, since. But originally, before sort of he announced that, I was going to have a crack at doing that, and so. I, th I was talking to Joel Ingleberth just um, on WhatsApp or whatever, and we were just kind of hashing out sort of uh, ideas, and I was just kind of throwing stuff to the wall and seeing if it stuck. And one of the big problems with that sign is that it's um, it's in two different places on the Pro and the Premium LE, um, mm -hmm. and it's like wafer thin. And now, sort of for me to do what I need to do, you know, you need to you need to have sort of at least sort of that amount of space. Um, for your circuit board and your LEDs and enough sort of diffusion material in between so the LEDs don't look spotty and all that kind of stuff. And it, it just wasn't coming together. Um, so I started thinking about sort of other ways to convey that, um, that information that's on that sign. Um, and then I kind of just I started thinking about a buoy sort of rocking back and forth in the water and how crazy and stupid an idea that was and could I do it is would it be possible um and I sort of I don't know it, you know usually with these things you usually just jump on YouTube and start like uh researching uh linkages and mechanical mm -hmm. movement and everything and um then you lose like days looking at people's Lego contraptions and the amazing <laughs> things that people do with that stuff with techniques and um and, you know, a lot of the time, you know, Paul, one of my mates, he builds a lot of his stuff out of Lego first to sure. prove that the linkages and the motors and stuff work and then converts that into something that's a bit more, I guess, robust for a, for a, for a pinball machine. Um, but that's, that's, you know, how I sort of came across, uh, you know, the offset cam, uh, which is a motor. Mm -hmm. So the motor spins really slowly and then there's an offset cam uh, that turns around like that, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's an arm attached to that cam, so it sort of goes like that. And then that's attached to the buoy, and then that's what makes it go back and forth. So it's a fairly it's, simple sort of little thing once you once you know how it's done. It's it's a windshield um, wiper. That's what it yeah. is. It's a windshield wiper. Yeah. It's a slow windshield wiper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. I, I, yeah. My my background is mechanical engineering. So is it's it? Like, yeah. So. so. Amazing. So that is, uh, yeah. It's when I saw it, I'm like, I know how you did that. I mean, it's it's a yeah, great yeah, idea yeah. for this, and it's a simple yeah. mechanism, so that's perfect. Oh man, I'm in awe because yeah, I I never did any mechanical engineering. Um, I did uh, a little bit of electrical engineering, 
and then loads of software engineering, which mm-hmm. is which is what I you know that's kind of my bag is the programming side of things. Um, but yeah, I'm fascinated by it. You know, all of the different uh, you know names for different linkages and mm-hmm. movement, and um, you know the fact that somebody just came up with it and then. Um, you know, you sort of do a little bit of, what was I looking at recently? A, a way to convert sort of horizontal movement mm-hmm. into, into vertical movement. Um, because I was trying to get a seagull's wings flapping and I don't know if that's going to go anywhere, but, um, that was kind of what I was researching anyway. And then you sort of, you find, uh, I can't remember the name of the, the linkage. Uh, it's like Watts linkage or something like that. Um, but then you find out, uh, just by sort of, you know, jumping on Wikipedia and stuff that that same linkage is the thing that's used on trains, you know, to, uh, to move, uh, pistons up or pistons move the wheels forward or whatever Mm. it is. But, you know, all these things that you look at every day and kind of, you just think, oh yeah, well that works, but you don't really think that somebody invented that and now their name is attached to that. And then you know, just by virtue of that invention, you know, you've got trains and you've got people building flapping seagulls and pinball machines, you know. So, yeah, I, I'm fascinated by it. I think it's something that's really, uh, really interesting. Well, and I'm fascinated with, like, I know you were saying it's very simple mechanic, but looking at the YouTube video and stuff of the buoy of death, it really does look like it's rocking in an ocean. Because, you know, it's not just yeah. a steady a steady movement it looks like it slows down as it tries to transition back it's like yeah. it's actually in the ocean and I, yeah. I like the idea of the dmd i don't know why some people would be upset with it i don't know but that, I, yeah. I still think it's cool like that you were able to integrate that in the game with the jackpot and with uh you know it yelling shark and well i guess it doesn't yell i guess as much yeah. as you can yell with the, with <laughs> the, the text DMD. shark yeah. shark <laughs> yeah, it does it does yeah but um, I mean, yeah, I, I like it too. Um, I mean, I get look the beauty of uh, sort. Of, I guess what I've been able to create with the software side of things is the and it's it's difficult to convey this stuff in a in a thread. You know, when somebody's bagging you out, you know, you're like, but, talk to me um, like I'm five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, but essentially, you know, like if people don't like that dmd yelling shark at them they can just change it you know they can just turn that bit off they can just keep it as eight if they want right um you know they can make it display something else when the shark is you know you could you could animate a shark going across it um you know that dmd the 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 great thing about it is um the, the text ticker are actually coded but the blood that sort of drips down it when you hit the uh, chum bucket Mm -hmm. that's an animated gif so i just pulled that animated gif off, you know, like tenor gifts or whatever, um, scaled it down to the right dimensions, which is tiny. It's like seven pixels by 21 pixels. Mm-hmm. And then just stored it in the flash memory of the board and it just plays then, like whenever that's hit. So that's just an arbitrary blood dripping gif. It could be anything. It could be a shark moving across the screen or, you know, <laughs> something fun for Christmas or whatever, you know. But it's kind of a proof of concept um, that we can that we can do that because um, you know the, the screen size the, the the pitch of it is sort of one mil by one mil for every mm-hmm. pixel so we can now put screens of that size in, in anything that we're doing and play gifs that are played in reaction to things happening in the game so Paul, who did the Atomic Godzilla, and myself are working on something for Foo Fighters at the moment that uses that same concept, um, has a screen and things happen in the game and then things change on the screen as a, as a result of that. So it's kind of just like adding more sort of tools to your arsenal in a way. Um, and when it came to the DMD and the boy, a uh, buoy, <laughs> um, I... You know, I kind of knew that there was always going to be a certain contingent of people who just wanted to see the original Jaws buoy, you know, the mm-hmm. one that Chrissy hangs on to. And, you know, you know, the, but for me to fit that screen in there, I had to change it a bit just because I had to, you know, just size constraints and stuff. But I knew there was always going to be a contingent who wouldn't like that I was changing things to that degree. Um, but, you know, I, w- I wanted to put it in. And uh, I wanted to test out like the flexible PCB sort of material that it sort of is printed on. 
Um, and yeah, I'm just really happy that I got it all working because uh, it was it was tricky. It was tricky. Um, you know, the I think the the buoy's kind of about that width, circular sure. width. Um, so we weren't sure whether the um, the flexible sort of PCB material would sort of you know the LEDs would sort of snap off if it was uh, made to curve around that sort of smaller surface. But it was it was all right. Um, you know, after we worked through a couple of iterations and put the connector in a different place um, and a bunch of things like that. But yeah, um, yeah. Well, so what I'm hearing is we could put Loser Kid in the DMD with dun, our dun, little dun. logo LKP. floating around in the track. Could, man, you could. Yep. Yeah. You absolutely yeah. could. You absolutely could. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's I'd, like I want to give that power to people, you know, like yeah. that. It increases the fun, doesn't it? Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. yeah, maybe my design decisions, you know, weren't right. Maybe the, the colors that I chose weren't right. Um, and, you know, with the noodle bar and Tokyo Neon and stuff, you know, I'm constantly seeing, uh, you know, them out in the wild. People post a picture of their Godzilla on the Facebook page or whatever, and I'll say, oh, there's Tokyo Neon, and they've changed the colors on it. And, you know, I see it, and I'm like, oh, we didn't change them that well. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> But they did, and they got it to the way that they wanted it, and that's that's the important thing, you know. They made it their own, and they made it unique, and I love that, and that's that's why I that's why I did it. That's why I sort of you know created that interface for people to be able to do that. Now, do well, you assemble these? The, oh, sorry, go ahead, Josh. I was going to say just just to say what David's saying. I really think that's what takes us to the next level too is the amazing amount of customization that you do with your your mods. And it's not just on the face of it. I know that you can send you send extra papers and stuff like that to switch out with the Neon Tokyo mm. sign or whatnot. But it's mm. it's literally going into the interface and changing it exactly color wise. And you even have several options so that way it's like I don't know if I feel confident enough to make my own color scheme. But there's several different color schemes here as well. Go for yeah. it, Scott. Yeah. Um, yeah. And well, Scott, to answer your question, yeah, um, I don't know. I've got somebody assembling for me. Thank God. <laughs> um, because I would go bonkers if not. Um, no, I got, I got a lovely, uh, lovely woman by the name of Danny, uh, who does all my assembly for me. Um, yeah, uh, Danny, Danny, uh, we sort of got the house cleaned a couple of times and sort of just called the company and Danny came over and she was just a lovely person, really easy to be around. And, and then she, you know, cleaned the house and, and left. And, and then when I sort of was thinking about um, getting somebody to do assembly for me, I was just like, oh, you know, she's she's really good. She was really thorough, <laughs> and um, she was, you know, easy to be around. You know, if I'm going to be working with somebody constantly and stuff, you just want it to be easy and stuff. And you know, it was the best decision I ever made. She's fantastic. You know, like really accurate. Um, you know, reminds me of things uh, that I've forgotten about that I've sort of mentioned to her. Um, you know, and then two weeks later, she'll remind me that we need to do it this way or that way or something. And so, yeah, it's great. Um, and, you know, and she sort of said to me how much she enjoys it and loves it. And, um, you know, the fact that she, you know, you know, enjoys this kind of work so much more than she did cleaning. Um, you know, and I, I think that's, that's, that's awesome that, you know, she's, she's really enjoying it. And, and, uh, you know, I'm certainly lucky to have her um and we'll probably be expanding the team this year as well moving to a new workshop soon and getting all that set up and um you know trying to trying to get through the the big old lists as quickly as possible that's kind of the focus focus for this year what what is your well there's a couple of questions i have and you can take them in Mm -hmm. whatever order you want sure man how did you one decide that this is something you're going to do that's that's my one of my first questions the second question Mm -hmm. is what was your first mod and third is what is currently your best selling mod okay yeah all right um so in terms of making mods and how i got into it i bought a dilapidated creature from the Black Lagoon off eBay with the view that I was going to turn it into a virtual pinball machine. Um, and this is when I wasn't in the pinball. Well, I was in the pinball, but I didn't, I wasn't in pinball, if you know what I mean, mm-hmm. you know. So I bought it, turned it into a, a virtual machine. Um, it was really fun. Um, 
I learned that I loved Dino and I learned that I loved Robo Wars and mm -hmm. a bunch of other games that I probably never would have discovered at that time at least mm -hmm. um, had I not played them virtually. Um, Dino particular absolutely loved. So I sort of had it in my head, oh, I want to get a Dino. Um, you know, and I want to get a real machine too, you know. Um, so I started hunting around for one and picked one up. And then sort of around about the same time as that all started happening, um, I decided that I didn't want the virtual machine anymore. I was going to rebuild a creature. Um, and that machine was absolutely toast. You know, the, the play field was destroyed, water damage. All the screws underneath were rusted into the play field and stuff. And I thought, oh, I'll just drill them out. It'll be fine. And obviously it wasn't fine at all. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a massive endeavor. But as a, you know, eventually it became, you know, a beautiful, beautiful machine. I really enjoyed the process. Um, but during that process, there were, you know, boards that were, were broken uh, in Creech, um, namely the uh, the chase board, which manages the uh, ramp lights. They sort mm -hmm. of flash on and off like a chase light pattern. Um, and I contacted uh, Bilung, uh, who runs UFO Pinball, um, who, who builds like a replacement uh, chase board and just got chatting with him about it um, and chatting about how the original board and his board still don't work with LEDs properly uh, for various reasons. And so I thought, oh, you know, and he, he said somebody needs to rebuild it so that it does work with LEDs. And so I was like, oh, I should give that a go. Um, and then just started researching Arduinos and building things on breadboards and sort of got a version working um, that could play patterns um, rather than just the chase light stuff. And it was all based on sort of sine waves. Um, you know, you just do a, a sine wave calculation, Y equals X squared plus four or whatever. And, you know, you create your sine wave and then mm -hmm. you use that sine wave to control which LEDs are lit along a light strip or along the ramp. So if you're at the bottom, it's off. And if you're in the middle, it's 50% on. And if you're at the top, it's fully on. Um, and so you can create like a blend of LEDs just doing that. And then alongside that, I was like, oh, and what if you could then move them using sine waves as well? So the sine wave then controls how much spin the thing's got. So like you were saying about the buoy sort of looking quite natural in the mm -hmm. water, it's because it's sort of parabolic. It, it um, you know, sine waves, you know, they sort of taper off and they go. So it sort of gives that natural feel to the way things are moving. And then by combining all these sine waves in different ways um, and using different types of waves, I could really easily create sort of these really interesting patterns along the along the ramps. Um, and I went through a bunch of iterations, um, and that ended up being my first mod. It was a, a chase. It was called the Chase Echo, um, and that was uh, my first mod uh, that I released. Um, but it's, it's that exact same code that I wrote for the Chase Echo that's now being used on every mod mm. that, I, that I do. Um, it was originally on the Arduino, and then I ported that code to a chip called the ESP8266. Um, the ESP32 is probably the better known one, but the beauty of that chip is it has Wi-Fi, um, and it can set up its own web servers. So that enables you to hook into the mod with your phone and change all the settings on the phone. So that opened up, you know, just, you know, so many doors in terms of what the configuration options were. Um, you know, before that, it was all dip switches on the board and stuff because there was no way to control what was going on internally. But as soon as you've got a web page, then you, you can just change everything. So, um, you know, having, having that code then on the web and all the color options that um, that RGB light strips offer um, just added you know a whole bunch of different dimensions and it's just it's just you know I've just added more and more functionality on top as time's gone on but um, yeah like in terms of when did I know that it was gonna be like it is now um, you know I mean Chase Echo I think I sold maybe maybe 30 or something initially, and then sort of trickled in orders. It possibly got up to around sort of 50 or 60 or something like that. 
Um, so, you know, I was, I was quite happy with that and that it wasn't going to, you know, replace my day gig or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't going to justify the amount of time I was spending playing pinball to my wife (laughs) at that point. Um, and then I, I did a bunch of mods after that as well. I did, uh, um, a, a mod of one of Swinx's mods. Uh, so it was a, a lighting rig for his snack bar for Creature as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I did the Lollipops, which you probably you know know the name. It's sort of filtered through other products as well. But um, initially that was just to control uh, pop bumpers, the like LED rings in pop bumpers, and sold a bunch of those as well. But it was all sort of on the same level. Um started producing HD pin to DMDs as well. And they were uh, quite popular to the point where I could sort of, I was getting a little bit of pot of money together um, enough so that I could start thinking about, Oh, maybe I could buy a new inbox, you know, and cause that just wasn't really, you know, wasn't available to me at that time money wise. Um, and so Godzilla was that machine, that, that machine that the, you know, the, the revenues from the pin to DMDs paid for. Um, and then John J85M on the forums, uh, uh, contacted me and said, you know, I really think you should have a go at, um, you know, changing the sign on Godzilla, uh, you know, something, something neon would work really well there, you know, in a Tokyo neon style. And so it was, it was his idea originally. Um, and I sort of took that and ran with it and, and um, I've told this story a bunch of times, so apologies for anybody who's <laughs> thinking it's heard it before. But, um, like, I'd, I'd done all the work. I produced the mod. I sort of filmed it um, and released it on Pinside in exactly the same way I'd done all the other ones and kind of expected it to be good, but not, like, anything more than 50 or 60 or whatever that I'd done in the past. I think I had parts for 20 at the point of release. And then uh, that was about five o'clock. I was going into town to meet up with my wife uh, for dinner uh, with the kids. So we jump on the tube, uh, central line. So you're, you're in tunnels and stuff, going through, no reception. And so I jump in, I'll be like, I'll just check inside and see how the see how the thread's doing. And it was just blowing up. Mm-hmm. Like there was maybe a hundred replies already, you know, loads of people on the list. I think by the end of that night, it was sort of closing in on 200 people on the list and stuff. And so it was just, yeah, it was bonkers. Uh, and, it's, and it's pretty much been bonkers ever since. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was it was pretty much it was pretty much at that point that I knew that it was something. I guess, yeah, something that could uh, you know turn into something quite special. Like it could actually quit my day job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been great, man. It's been really good. I've, I've been very fortunate, and um, you know, met so many great people, and you know, doing Expo and 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 Texas, uh, you know, every year now, um, and just met you know so many wonderful people, had so many great experiences on the back of Tokyo Neon. So yeah, the biggest seller, Tokyo Neon by far. Um, closing on 2,000 wow. orders, I think, now. <laughs> so, 2,000? Uh, yeah. Okay, that is really Holy impressive. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. It's when nuts, you have, isn't it? Yeah, when you have, two, when you have uh, 1,000 LEs and you have doubled the LE sale. Yeah. I like guess. Yeah, I'd, I would love to know how many Godzillas, like what are the sales figures of Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to know that, that data, Ma- mainly just because... I could then correlate that with how many Godzillas then, you know, what percentage of Godzillas actually have taken any on them. Well, even if you, so, e- even if you say 10,000, that's one in five. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Colin Alzheimer with Kinetisys and This Week in Pinball, he did, granted, they're all real rough numbers, but he was doing some real in-depth research. His guesstimate was closer to about 5,000 is what's out in the wild for Godzilla. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but he could at least confirm there was like 5,000 out there. Well, I would so. say that, that all our estimates are probably low. Yeah. That, that, that's what I'm guessing because you're not going to capture random person who bought a Godzilla and put it in their house. And and my friend yeah. is one of them. My friend, he, uh, he just barely, he talked to me uh, a year ago 
and was wondering about pinball machines. He ended up getting a Godzilla for Christmas. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, it's just it's a it's going to be an Adams Family yeah. type game yeah. in time. I think it's just never going to. And to be honest, like I was doing, I've started work on the subway tonight, and I haven't played Godzilla for ages just because mm-hmm. I do so much work on it that it's just constantly glass off, playfield up, glass, and so you sort of like. <laughs> Ugh. But I played it tonight, and I was just like, Man, it's such a good game. Like it really is an absolute cracker. Um, and it's nice to go back to it after playing, like you know, f- oh, you know, I've been playing a lot of Foo Fighters, I've been playing a lot of The Big Lebowski, I've been playing a lot of Jaws. Um, so yeah, it's nice to go back to God's, and it feels different too from all those yeah. games. Weirdly, you know, mm-hmm. um, I kind of expected it to feel the same, but it didn't at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a, it's an absolute cracker, and I, I don't think I'll ever get rid of mine just because you know I feel like I feel like I owe it so much. You know, for what it's what it's given me, the life the life opportunities that it's given me, like I'll never be able to pay that back. So, you know, I'll just keep it on a pedestal <laughs> for a <laughs> time. It, there's a reason Nothing why it, it has displaced Medieval Madness as number one, and there's a reason mm. because it is a it's a better game, and it, it's hard to imagine that since Medieval Madness was basically the pinnacle for years. And you're able to find this thing. So, I mean, that's why it makes sense to invest the money into all these mods that really take it to the next level. Mm, yeah. And I, look, I think it's it's one of those ones, isn't it? Because, you know, I've commandeered that game mm-hmm. um, for for good good or bad, good for me, obviously, but not so good for other mod makers who, uh, you know, feel like they they could have you know had had more of that. I guess um, they still can, and <laughs> they they yeah no you, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. They can, um, and in some ways it was just right place, right time, you know, and right technology. Um, I guess I'd sort of been working on all this stuff up until that point, and then just kind of dropped it. You know, drop the 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 probably you know probably one of the best ones I'll ever do. Um, you know, in 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 Godzilla, which is the, one of the best games and the biggest selling game, and you know, mod making wasn't quite at that I guess that point yet. You know, Lior was still doing his thing and doing it very very well. Um, but uh, you know, and and you know, uh, you know, obviously it was very beautifully made from a, from a making point of view, but not uh, not as technical sort of, you know, there's different approaches, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but kind of nobody was doing that stuff. So it kind of, you know, created even bigger waves because of that fact. Um, so, you know, I obviously it takes a lot of hard work and I'm very proud of what I've done and all that stuff. But I do also count myself very lucky that the stars aligned in, in such a way and for that game, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Yeah. Well, I've got to ask... I'm, I'm going to pivot a little bit because sure, yeah. uh, let's pivot a new game. A new game got released Did and it? apparently it has no guns in it. So my what? question to you is, are you going to revive John wick with a couple of guns? <laughs> uh, not with any guns. No, I'm not going to 3d print any crap looking guns so that people can stick them in their game. No, sorry. I'm steering it all well clear of that. Uh, look, if we're going to talk John wick and modding, Mate, that back skyline just okay. looks oh, like beautiful. it. You know, I could do I could do a lot with that. Um, that that for me just looked like. I mean, I I think it I think it looks really good as is. But imagine turning that into a you know a neon nightscape in proper John Wick style. Mm-hmm. You know, even the even the three ring. Uh, the uh, night nightclub thing, you know, yeah. you could do a lot with that too. And you know, um, the only the only thing that I'm concerned about is I think it might be I'm just not sure about sales, at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure how much uh, a time investment would be worthwhile. Okay, so, cause... So, so I was yeah, let's yeah, talk yeah, about so, it. Let's... So let's pivot. Let's talk about John Wick. Uh, so we are recording this shortly after John Wick was announced. A little less, or a little more than twenty four hours. Yeah, about twenty four hours. Ben Shaw. So this is something that uh, okay. I know that 
Josh just watched the first three movies. I watched the first one today. I, I know it's 10 years old, but I, I haven't watched it. Um, and I, uh, Davey, have you, have you seen the John no, Wick movies? I haven't. Okay. No, I haven't. Um, shamefully, I haven't. Um, we've got a UK sort of WhatsApp group and, and all of those guys have seen it. All those guys love it. Um, I've been sneaking little clips on YouTube, uh, you know, just to see sort of certain scenes and stuff. And I, I think I'd enjoy it. So, okay. so I want to hurry, hurry and insert this before you keep, go off, Scott. Yeah. If you're looking to watch these movies, you can actually watch them for free via Tubi, T-U-B-I. It's an app. Um, it does have commercials, but I, that's how I watched the first three. The fourth one, you're going to have to rent because yeah. it's too new. But if you're looking to watch these movies, because there has been multiple people like, yeah, yes. we haven't seen this. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. so Check. ironically, I was I was doing that today. And the guy from, uh, I don't know if you, you probably don't have this ad, but the guy who uh, plays the Mayhem guy for the Allstate commercials, he's in the movie. Right. And he's all he's doing one, yeah. is just doing stupid stuff in these commercials. And that, uh, yeah. but in the movie, he's like, you know, one of the henchmen, right? But yeah, that, that clip ass. kept coming up for the advertisement, which I thought was hilarious that it was, it just yeah. made it even more comical. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the question I have is, <laughs> yeah. um, okay. We are going to put on our marketing hats. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Is this a movie that you th think um, warranted or would, would have been a good idea to build a pinball machine around? Josh, you want to go first? Uh, uh, sure. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to say no at this point. Okay. Maybe uh, okay but I want to know why road. too. I, I don't want just, just yes or no. I want to know, okay, why do you think it would be a good idea or why do you think it'd be a bad idea? I think, uh, before Carrie Hardy went off on his rant, he did a video about how that John Wick doesn't have nostalgia going for it yet. And that's okay. the thing. Like you look at giant mnemonic and a lot of people don't like the movie, but the actual game itself has nostalgia for it. And so I just, I have a hard time with this hits kind of a specific group of people when it comes to the, to John wick. I know it's a billion over a billion dollar franchise. Uh, four I, it's Keanu Reeves. It's 4 billion. That's unbelievable. It's grossed over 4 billion worldwide. Oh, all the movies combined. Mm -hmm. Oh, what okay. Have been doing? <laughs> what have I been doing? I just I, completely miss this. Uh, it's it's crazy because, I mean, this has it, – it's one of those weird ones where I feel disconnected. Like you and I, Scott, we talked about this last episode. Right. And thanks, Zach, many for shouting us out and talking about that episode yeah. on the episode you and Greg just released this week. But we neither one of us had seen this, and, and we both had agreed like it's, it's overly violent for what kind of demographic pinball usually goes to. Mm -hmm. But like there's nothing wrong with that because – I mean, okay, Elvira is they, they have the done usual... this before, though. They've done Sopranos. Yes. They, they they have done Pulp Fiction, which is a huge seller. They've done okay, Walking that Stern. Dead. That was CGC. CG, CG, CG. Walking yeah, okay, Dead. Yeah, yes. yeah. I'm I'm just talking like pinball themes. So they've done The Walking Dead. They've done that. So they have the hey uh, Stern even made Playboy, and so they have veered <laughs> yeah. into adult themes that aren't you know okay. You and I are solidly in the we're raising kids phase. Like yes. we're, we're in the PG, maybe PG 13, just because that's, uh, that's what we have chosen to do. So, so I, I yeah. get that, but yeah, walking we'll dead's see. walking dead's never going to appear in your lineup until the kids no. are out of home. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, okay. I, I was wondering about iron maiden appearing because it's kind of funny. Really? How, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the animation, but the funny thing is my, I don't think my kids have ever played iron maiden, so they've never really looked yeah. too closely at yeah. it, but it's yeah. just, it's kind of funny that I'm, I guess I've, I'm, I'm That's well the into the monster themes. And okay. um, to be honest, when kids have come over to my house yeah. to play games, people have been far more scared of Rudy and Funhouse than they have been <laughs> by Creature or Dracula or, you know, or Iron Maiden or any of those ones. Rudy is far more terrifying than, than anything. Rudy's um, creepy. He is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the it's the fun house yeah. at the start. The, <laughs> I had a little kid run out of the arcade. <laughs> I felt really terrible for okay. laughing. So, yeah. Josh, you're saying, okay, like it, it it doesn't seem like a good idea. Is that is that the take I'm getting from you, Josh? 
Yeah, it, it I wouldn't think, be something you would choose. I, yeah, I, the, I just don't think there's not necessarily well, maybe the violence. I don't. I just I don't know what it's about John Wick. Like, I mean, yeah, Pulp Fiction's a cult classic. Like it, it's that also came it's, out. It's in, it's got in ninety well, something. Like, yeah. Yeah, Pulp ninety-two. Got a lot 90, of dialogue. Yeah. John Wick's got hardly any dialogue. Yeah, doesn't, yeah. We, like, we googled this the other day. This thing, uh, the first John Wick film. There's a total like Keanu Reeves has a total of like three hundred and eighty words, mm-hmm. and the hard part is I think half of them are in Russian. So you're really not getting much context there. Yeah. Uh, and I think even the final film, he says the most, and it's like four hundred and eighty words. So yeah. there's not really much you can quote from the movie. I mean, there's some really <laughs> yeah. great quotes. Uh, watching that first film, you know, uh, uh, do you know who Baby Yaga is? Is is what he says to his son, uh, the the boss guy, and he's like, "Yeah, the boogeyman. I'm not afraid of the boogeyman." And he's like, mm. "This is who you send to kill the boogeyman." Yeah. And it's like, "Oh, <laughs> it just it's a really good line." But it's funny because yeah. like yeah. a lot of these lines didn't come from Keanu. It was, yeah. it was mostly yeah. the villains and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just I don't know. It, it's it's one of those things like, um. I guess when they were making this movie, they they cited the good, the bad, and the ugly, and Point mm-hmm. Blank is both inspirations for this movie. And I look at those two movies as well, and they're not movies I would be like, oh yeah, we need to have pinball machines of those. But they do. It's kind of the same context, right? It's kind of more of it's action driven with story that kind of takes a backseat that's still there. But you know, how does that translate to a pinball machine? Where thinking of Jaws. I mean, Jaws, yeah, it's violent. There's a lot of blood in that game, and they've done an amazing okay, job Jaws, of Jaws and, Okay, Jaws is not remotely as violent as John Wick is. True, very true. Okay, very true. But, I mean, they could have went the same level with Jaws as they did with John Wick. I, I just don't know. Okay, marketing-wise, I don't know where they got their metrics for this. I okay. think I thought it was a bad idea. So I think it was it was, it was a miss marketing-wise. Okay, all right, all right Davey, you, you have the floor. Okay, so I think it's always hard to translate dark and moody themes into pinball um, because pinballs are boxes of lights. So how do you how do you go dark and moody when you've got like RGB LEDs flashing everywhere? I think purely from an aesthetic point of view, it's quite difficult. So John Wick in that regard is a very sort of stylized neon, you know, you know, there's there's, you know, breakdowns of the colour choices that they've made in certain scenes that, you know, I was reading recently and it's really fascinating. Mm-hmm. You know, they do like greens and yellows and then they do blues and reds and, you know, it's very well thought out mm-hmm. in terms of its colour palettes. Um, so on, on, on that scale, aesthetically, you know, that, that would translate well to a pinball machine if, yeah. you, followed, if you followed that lead. I'm not sure that they have entirely on that on that one um i thought jaws was going to have the same problem you know it's it's kind of dark and moody and uh you know it's all out at sea and but the the fact that they sort of leaned into the water aspect of it um you know i think i think saved in that regard for me it's still not the, the the most beautiful of games jaws i think it's sort of um, you know, just doesn't quite sort of gel together for me uh, from a from a looks point of view. Um, and but for John Wick as well, like I think I don't think cars work in pinball at all. Like Hot Wheels, Corvette, uh, NASCAR, Grand, yeah, NASCAR, Mustang, like, yeah. like they're all just terrible and. And it's not, you know, I think it's the, I think it's cars themselves. Like I just don't, you know, I think Grand Prix and games like that are probably the exceptions where, um, and, uh, getaway high speed, good game too. High speed, yeah, high yeah. speed getaway is probably the best car game we've got, but there's no car on that, yeah. on that game. If you know what I mean, it's yeah. got an engine, it's got sort of loops and stuff. It's, it's not the car itself. Um, any game that's got like a matchbox type matchbox uh, Hot Wheels type or a model car, yeah, there. like a, a model <laughs> yeah. car. Like yeah. it just it just kind of looks too toy. I mean, I know we're all playing with toys, and that's why we love these things so much. What about for me? It just, Park. just Jurassic Park the has the has the truck thing that or the whatever that. See, is. I don't even think. Yeah, I, like that's for me. That's the least best bit of Jurassic Park okay. is that spinny car thing. 
Okay. Um, I, but probably, probably, you know, yeah, I just, I just don't know. Cars, cars just don't do it for me. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think somebody was saying on Pinside that, um, that they should have, and I know that they couldn't because of all the licensing right. and stuff and whatever, but what they, what they should have leaned into is like, you know, the reloading of the shotgun, you know, with cartridges and stuff, you know, and, you know, I mean, imagine if they'd sort of done that with, you know, balls in the lock and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like there could have been some really interesting um, choices they could have made that were very John Wick that weren't yeah. like, what's that, what's that? I mean, I've not seen it, so I don't know whether you guys, but the, the amulet thing on the left, like, I'm just like, what? Is that that's got to so be in a, the next ones because I only saw so the first it's one. It's a big part of yeah, the, it's a big part of the second and third movie. It's called a right. blood a blood amulet. Essentially, like you you seal it, your you seal it with your blood, saying that like you owe someone a favor regardless of what they ask. And then once you call in that favor and they complete it, you the person that owes the favor seals it with blood, hmm. and so. Yeah, John Wick is asked to do something impossible in the second one, and it it, it revolves around that, and then he plays it into the third one as well. So, okay. Um, okay, whether so it, it actually needed its own toy, I'm not entirely yeah. convinced. But I, I can understand why. Something now, on the play field. I'll get to yeah. that in a little bit, but I can understand why they would use that, and I'll tell you why. Um, from a theme standpoint, I would argue that this is actually a good pinball theme. Um, the yes. way, I, the way I'm looking at it is because it is definitely an action movie. And yes. if you look at the fight scenes, okay, I'm going to say this and you can tell me if I'm wrong. The fight scenes seemed like it was a combination of the matrix and blade had a love child. Yeah. Like, yeah, we'll like that. the visuals, the vision, when you were talking, uh, David, when you're talking about the colors, that is exactly what the matrix did in the, you yeah. know, in the matrix world, the everything the had a green and, yeah. hue. And so yeah. that that's immediately yeah. what jumped out at me. I also loved the color vibe because it felt a little bit like kind of that eighties, you know, we're talking total nuclear annihilation. You're talking, if you're in a muse fan you're talking simulation theory, you know, that type of, of color palette it does yeah. work for pinball and because it yeah. has that sort of, you know, that, that sort of rock and roll feel, I mm. totally understand that. Now what I'm going to say is we, okay. We know because this has been a dust up over the last 24 hours that Stern has a, a actually, dust up? <laughs> well, okay. I'll, I'll put it this way. When people saw that there were no guns now, in the artwork. In the artwork, right. Now, there's plenty of shot. Like, uh, apparently, there's going to be a lot of footage. It, it, okay, this seems to be a little bit like um, Jaws when they didn't get Roy, Roy Sh- Schneider. Yep. It's not Schneider. Schneider. Yep. Schreiner, yeah. Yep. When they didn't put him on the play field and people were like, why didn't you put him on the play? And they're like, um, because his, his estate never got back to us. Like, we couldn't put him on the play field because he didn't. So, but it, when I play Jaws, it doesn't feel like a big deal because he's on the screen all the time. Yes. Mm. So is it a yeah. big deal that there are no guns, at least in the art? Because from what I'm guessing, I don't know how you can cut together John Wick without having him shoot things. And you're actually going to have to limit how many times you see someone's head explode. Because That's I true. counted like 50 which it, none of us want to do that. No, yeah. none of us want to limit that. No, no, you don't want to limit that. Man. No, yeah. I just uh, so 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 with those design constraints. With, so obviously Stern came out and basically you know George Gomez came out and said, "Hey, just so you guys know, there are this was a request from the licensor. Yes. Therefore, we we had to work with constraints. We had to work with limitations, and." Because that's just what we had to work with. And he even brought up, which has been a longstanding confirmed rumor now, that Bond had a lot of issues too with yes. licensing issues. Now, given that, would you take this on knowing that the licensor is going to say, hey, we have these design constraints, especially when it seems quite fundamental to the storyline of John Wick? 
Well, and the interesting part too, he not only did he talk about Bond, I've got the quotes here. Okay. He also talks about, okay, so he talks yeah, about- go, go, uh, go, with, go ahead and read it. We'll, we'll give George the mic. Go ahead and read. This so, is from George Gunn. So he says, there's no toy guns thing was a brand mandate. It was, it was brought down, not something we could control. We didn't worry too much about it because there's plenty of guns in the film clips and and from all four films, like you said, Scott. And then he goes on to iterate too, like you were saying, all the Bond artwork had to be based on an existing poster artwork. So they couldn't draw any guns or, or design a toy around the Walter PPK, which is the iconic gun for Bond. Mm-hmm. That That is similar. That is what I meant by similar. On Deadpool, a character known for weapons, like guns and everything, mm-hmm. all the guns had to be stylized to be fantasy blasters and could not resemble real weapons. It's not uncommon for brands to have sensitivities to how guns are portrayed. On Wick, 100% of the art had to be created from scratch. So none of this is actually post artwork or anything like that. Randy Martinez did a great job in, in making all this artwork from scratch. And when you do that, that's when the brand mandate mm-hmm. says, hey, you can if you're doing this all from scratch, no guns. Now, if they were now if they did poster artwork like they did with Bond, then it can be in there. It, it's really, really weird. But this is a this is a thing this that is licensing. We've talked about licensing issues in the past. Yes. So, so Davey, you're you're working on these things. Would you say, you know what, that's something I can work with? Because obviously Stern made that argument or that agreement mm. to say, yeah, yeah, decision. this is what they're asking of us, but we can work with this. I guess it depends on how far along in the process you are before they drop a bomb like that, you know. Um if it's very early on in the process and you haven't actually started any R and D or, you know, um, you know, I, you know, there was, there was conversations that Avengers infinity quest was a different game before it became Avengers infinity quest. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it? Um, yeah. so yeah, I mean, it's possible that, you know, you could do all the R and D and then just switch out the theme to something else. I know nobody likes hearing that. And obviously you'd prefer that all pinball designers designed, a uh, layout specifically for the theme in question, but the reality is they probably don't. They don't. Um, like, I would, I would struggle. I think I just the whole. I know you guys, you guys talk, you know, a lot more knowledgeably about uh, license constraints and uh, the roadblocks that people have come up against when working, uh, you know, with particular licenses and the stories that you've heard in the industry of people who have come across uh, these problems. And we've got people over in the UK as well who um, have experience in these areas too. It's not something that I've ever had to to do in any of my industries is, is, you know, work work with a license holder. Um, But it just, for for a brand like John Wick, it just boggles my mind that, the license holder would then say that they didn't want to depict them well, yeah. for exactly the thing that they're known for. Like even even Deadpool, right? Yeah. Like I would argue that Deadpool's known for his sarcastic humor and quick wit. Like yeah. that's that's what you would say about Dan and his red suit and Ryan Reynolds. Like, you know, there'd be a plenty of things that people would list before um, you know, guns and, and weapons and stuff. True. Of, of which that's a part of his character. But okay, but but with like, Deadpool, they ended up going with the cartoon version and uh, the the guy who does the cartoon voice, and it ended up working. So uh, I yeah. I know that people said, "Hey, how can you have Deadpool without Ryan Reynolds?" Because that is what people are associating with it. I own Deadpool, and it's great. It's funny, and I don't really care that Ryan Reynolds is in it. Really? I would argue I mean, though his pull... guns are pretty iconic though because like looking at the new movie, yeah, I and mean, on the end of his gun it says "Smile, wait for the flash," and that's to me that's iconic because of that gun. I, mm-hmm. I don't, yeah. I get what you're saying, Davey. Yeah. So, so is the whole can we can we can we distill it down to the fact that a pinball machine is a toy? Yes. And you can't put guns on toys. So, like whenever they've licensed John Wick. Mm-hmm for figurines which we've seen you know people have been posting sure. pictures of john wick figurines with guns on them and stuff mm-hmm. that's not classed as a toy like 
I don't know. Hey, hey, well, I, I, I would say that it's, um, I guarantee there's going to be violent clips that are going to have gunshots. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm just yeah. saying it is going to be part of the game. I think that taking it out of the artwork is not a deal breaker for me. Yeah. And like, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm not the kind of person who would be put off by there being no guns as well. For me, it's more of an intellectual um, question, you know, like I'm just interested in how this came about in the first place and, 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 and the marketing side of it too, in terms of how big a fallout this is for them and what, what a deal breaker it is for a lot of people. It, and regardless of whether that's right or wrong, right. It's, it's happened, you know, like we've been earlier before we started the, the phone call, we were talking about uh, distributors and the fact that, um, you know, anecdotally, this has been the worst launch in terms of sales figures over the last 48 hours that they've ever experienced. Now, you know, just uh, unless they turn it around, which is very possible, you know, we could have an amazing showing on the, you know, on the, on the gameplay uh, reveal, um, uh, you know, everybody could completely turn around on and say, oh, I don't care anymore. And then, then sales go through the roof. Personally, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that I think that first impressions kind of stick with these things, and the market is saturated. You know, people are people are waiting for what Dutch has got coming down the road. Um, uh, you know, JJP are going to be releasing something soon, possibly at Expo. There's a lot of options at the moment, and for something to go down this badly, which it seems to have done and so, like, so far I'm, I'm with you so far, i'm yeah. with you scott I don't, I don't think it's i don't think it's i don't care but from a from a marketing point of view yeah i think it's a disaster and yeah. i just want to know why i want to know why that you know how how has this come about and whether the story that we're hearing is the is the truth because i just don't know it doesn't make any well, sense to me I've done some research uh, on Lionsgate because, you know, if, if we're going to put it back on the brand and whatnot, you know, there's a big difference between the people that front the money to make the movie and the actual directors and the people involved in making the movie. The other thing about Lionsgate, too, is for about the last 10 years, they've made some poor financial decisions. They, they kind of overextended themselves after John Wick came out by buying up uh, different properties and stuff like that. And then about 2019, they decide they need to start bailing out water from the ship. And now they've been selling between stars and breaking up assets and, and making stuff public. And I think when you have that much inner turmoil as well, uh, it becomes, I guess, one of the, the you can you can Google all this. The, the one point I want to get to I was reading last night is so they were trying to sell off Lionsgate uh, Plus. I guess that's a big thing over in the UK. I don't know. We don't really have it here. Mm. Um, but it, between that and stars, cause they own kind of the same properties, um, ABC and CBS were, were looking to buy these properties, uh, for their streaming services for stars and whatnot. And they had to negotiate a deal of like five, five million or billion, whatever it was for the streaming app for ABC. And then someone went, Hey, by the way, CBS is willing to pay for this. Let's go back to an agreement we've already made and up the price by another half a million or billion, whatever it was. And it kind of goes to show too, I think when it comes to licensing, because we've heard this with certain like certain licenses, they agreed to so much up front, but then it's like, once you agree to that price, like, oh, by the way, if you want this extra, right, it's going to be an extra couple million dollars or whatever it may mm. be. And so I think that's another thing that plays into it because you just automatically assume guns are going to be involved with John Wick. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about another marketing aspect that kind of boggled me as well. Okay. Uh, Stern went with some influencers that were more on the arcade side, mm -hmm. but almost like the virtual cabinet and like arcade one style stuff. Yeah, the one up, which stuff. is fine. Like it's their it's their prerogative. And looking at these people's pages, you know, they're they. Their videos tend to be around, you know, five to 10,000. Their most popular, you know, got their 80, mm -hmm. 90,000 views. But a lot of these videos that have these 80, 90,000 views have nothing to do with pinball. Uh, I get that you're trying to reach a new audience, but it was kind of weird 
especially where you already have a built-in audience with with loser kid with pinball show i think pinball show is a seller and a distributor we've seen that zach can actually do some really great stuff with video Mm -hmm. and i think the thing is is a lot of this video okay so the way that pinball works i'm going to give you a quick quick breakdown so the ellie's is what gives its it's 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 boost right it's octane Mm -hmm. at the very end very beginning of the cells and then what we see over time is there's a slow burn right people they explore they research and they don't usually pull the trigger till about six months to a year later depending on the product yeah or or someone that just came into the hobbies like i wonder if they make a john wick pinball machine and it's been out for two years now how do i get my hands on it well the thing is is people are looking for evergreen content at that point they're looking at reviews they're looking at the problem is is when you're when you're releasing this content it's great that you went this way with influencers but a lot of it was done poorly uh there's videos where there's no sound at all and i'm watching about a john wick video and it's sidewards and it's like this just doesn't feel professionally done and i get it's an influence or whatever i just think you should have if you're going to do influencers like that find someone that you're going to get better control of uh i i still applaud jjp for doing was it wonka that they had they gave uh the the slow motion guys that video got millions of views and all they all jjp had to do was give them a machine for like a week or two you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying it, it really was they're out five five hundred thousand bucks in shipping i just get it in front of a bigger audience than tens of thousands you know yeah, what i'm saying i saw that i saw that slow motion video <laughs> I, <laughs> I was one of those millions <laughs> same here yeah. I, that that's the other part that boggled me marketing wise i just don't yeah. fully understand what the and, and that's the other thing too is they've come but out the and they've is, defended it, it the them too. I mean, and I don't want to slag anybody off because, um, you know, like I'm sure they're, they're good guys and they were, they were, you know, just making content and, you know, they got contacted by a company to do some stuff and they were like, say yes, like we all do, you know. Um, but as a result of sort of, I guess, not using sort of industry people as much, you had some of these guys referring to expression lights as intelligent lights, you know, yeah. and, and things like that. And it's just like it's like you were saying josh it's just the the polish isn't there you know and for those of us that are a little bit obsessive about this hobby and know everything inside out and talk about the uh, the miniature details of it you know in in podcasts and things like that seeing something like that on a reveal video just it it just isn't it just isn't right is it um and you know what's funny too Sorry, no, speaking of that to that guy who said that because you know it's not his gig, is it? It's not his gig to know those things. Well, not only that, but he had a Godfather in the background the whole, the time. whole time. Yeah, the whole. You have time, a reveal yeah. video for John Wick, and you're sporting another company's pinball machine. Put, put yeah. John Wick back there, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I don't have a problem <laughs> with them going to these people uh, because. That is how marketing is done. What I yeah. don't understand is you're giving early access to people who are not in the industry to promote your product. Shouldn't you also consider giving early access to people who are in the industry to promote your product? Yeah. That's what I don't understand. Like, I don't care if they, if they do the arcade one up guys, fine. Uh, not a big deal. If you get a random influencer guy, however, you're going to make your LE money off people who are familiar with podcasts. They are familiar with streamers. They are familiar with people who at least know what they're talking about in pinball and they can talk intelligently about it. You should also give them the same courtesy to allow them because right now, okay, we are, 48 hour you know, we're 24 to 48 hours after the reveal and we are still going off the stuff that everybody can go and look on the website on and so everything we're doing we're trying to connect the dots and the people who listen to us they're not random people who are just finding something to fill the day there are people who are own pinball machines they are in their house they are the exact buyers that you are trying to reach with this $13,000 product, wouldn't you like, okay, when I look at stuff and they give me targeted, uh, targeted advertising, they're giving me something for a dad in his forties 
who was like, they're, they're catering exactly to my uh, demographic, right? So yeah. don't you want to do the same thing when you're trying to sell a $13,000 pinball machine? You should cater to people who actually have a pinball machine in their house. Yeah. Uh, at, le well, at least include that, include that in your marketing. Like I don't, I, I'm so puzzled by their marketing decisions that it, it, I, I don't, and this is me as an amateur guy looking outside. I just don't understand why you would only cater to the people who have a tangential. Well, Scott, based on the effectiveness of that marketing over the last 48 hours, I think you can pretty much guarantee they won't be doing the same thing again next no, time. I, I, I agree. I think I would, I would choose a, I would choose a few streamers. I would choose a few podcasters and you don't have to give them a game, but I'm saying give them the yeah. opportunity to be exposed to the game and, you know, sign an NDA or whatever. And that way, they can actually have something intelligent to talk about on the day. There's a reason why when movies come out, they do a press release. They go through all the talk show circuits. They go and they, they try to saturate it when it comes out because they want people to go on day one. If you're trying to sell LEs, that's the biggest markup that you're going to have. And that drives everything else. Like, why don't you take advantage of this? amateur uh marketing fan base that you already have access to like people love talking to and i know this sounds like i'm i i'm people can look at it and say you just want early access to stuff well, okay yes <laughs> that is one thing but yes. i also would it's love to, i would love to have it's a, on offer yeah, yeah i would love to, okay that's i'm trying to be fair but i would love to have yeah. something more come back to us in the comments yeah. I, I would love to have something more to talk about than everyone else who's a fan of pinball just scratching their heads at what their decisions are. Yeah, well, it was nobody could quite work it out, really, to be honest. Um, I don't know look, if they've I, hit this I, guy up uh, really quickly. I don't know if they've hit this guy up. Why don't they hit up Unbox Theory? That's like literally his job is to unbox these games. And he's done it with $30,000 PCs. The guy's got 24 million views. I mean, or subscribers. He's got videos that have 30, 73 million views. Why haven't they hit this guy? Maybe they have, and he's just not interested. It, which just is like, fine. Uh, you, you're not going to get turned down by people who are making streaming, like streaming pinball their hobby or pinball, uh, you know, pinball podcasts their hobby. You're not going to be turned down by those people. And you can pick the ones that you think would be, uh, give a better assessment. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Go for it, Davey. Oh, I was, I, I was going to say, like, I mean, they, they've they embraced uh, the competition side of things, haven't they, in terms of, like, pulling in influential people from that uh, scene, like like Keith Elwin, you know, to, to come in as, as a designer. And, I mean, that's, that's paid off in spades for them, you know, to utilise the experience of somebody who plays at a very high level and uh, plays in a way that's conducive to competition um, has really sort of honed, I guess, the you know, honed the edges of their games, particularly Elwin's games, and then that's obviously then carried on into other people's games as they've picked up on those same ideas. So it is it is weird that they're not sort of embracing the other sort of grassroots areas of, of, of pinball as well. Um, you know, I mean, I've always said how much I would love them to embrace the mod scene a little bit more. And, you know, I know that there's various reasons why they don't. Um, again, you know, people have posited that it's uh, because of licensing and you can't um, be seen to be giving access to third parties of that um, licensed material. Um, but even if you weren't, you know, even if you were very explicit that the material was untouchable and you locked that down, you know, even just giving us uh, access to um, the, the data that the game's producing, the switches and the lamps would make our lives so much easier. Um, and we'd be able to produce better things that would hopefully then in turn create more hype and more um, promotion around the games that are, that are getting created. Like modders are getting better and better at releasing stuff you know, as close to launch day as possible. Um, you know, even if they sort of had a trusted couple of people that they gave the schematics to ahead of time and got them to sign NDAs or whatever, um, so that, you know, we could, you know, use, you know, what marketing 
is at our disposal as well, you know, around launch week or whatever to promote the game, the mods, whatever. Um, it's all going to be, you know, better for, for them at the end of the day. So, you know, it's it's a pity for me too that I, I feel like, um, you know, they're underutilising, uh, you know, this, this talent base that exists around the mod scene, um, you know, in, in much the same way as the content creators, I think, are underutilised in the same way. I, I want to move on to let's actually give our thoughts. And now that we've talked about okay. the the uh, the launch of this and the marketing of this, I want to talk about the actual game itself. Okay, what's your guys' first impressions? What do you think of layout? Um, do you feel like this pinball machine represents John Wick well? Do you, uh, Scott, do you want to hit it off for us? Yeah, I okay. This they took a similar approach of uh, visual style. Um, color palette, this looks very much like a Pulp Fiction type, uh, thing, which I don't think is a bad thing. It actually is very, it's in many ways, it's a similar vibe. It's a little bit more of a, um, it's a, it's a line drawn, but kind of a comic book vibe. The colors are great. Um, artistic wise i think it looks it, it looks great because it it feels like in that you know how pulp fiction is kind of in this in this you're not really sure what era it is you know you can't like lock the style down i would say the yeah, same yeah. thing i mean these are the most well-dressed assassins i could think of like i i'm not exactly <laughs> sure why you need a suit and tie to go in and fight and beat up on someone but they all looked fantastic um but if you don't know that, Scott, we're not going to explain I it know, to you. I know, I know, I can't. I, I, you know, you got to dress for success or dress for death, I guess. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I, I would say that, yeah, it, it visually, I think it looks great. It's, uh, you know, there's, okay, it's a pinball machine, and I would say it's at least solidly in the middle. It feels a lot like, um, I don't know, it kind of gave me the vibe of a Ghostbusters, how you had the big ramps and the cityscape. I think it look it looks pretty, and the layout yes. looks at least. I, it's hard to judge a layout if you don't play it, but at least it looks like a well thought out layout. Yeah. What do you think, Davy? Uh, slightly different. Um, so when I initially saw the screen grab that got leaked onto Pinside and stuff, I was I thought it I thought it was I thought it gave me really strong Venom vibes. Um, and it still does in a lot of ways, I think. Uh, you know, yes, that could just be the fan layout and stuff. Um, but, yeah, it was giving me quite strong Venom vibes initially. Um, we, uh, yeah, so then we saw the, the, the full reveal and um, and we also, there, was, there was also some other videos floating around too um, where we could see actual gameplay and stuff. Um, I think the play field for me, I think generally it's it, it, in comparison to the stills that we initially saw, I thought it looked a lot better in the, in the full reveal uh, in terms of the color palette. Yeah. It was a lot more poppy. Uh, the cartoon vibes you were mentioning, Scott, I think did, did come through a lot better, but I still think that there's some weird color choices. Like, um, you know, they sort of went with like purple and, purple and pink on the main sort of motif in the middle, but then the slings are then green and then there's green on the cityscape at the back. If it was me, I would have, I would have just played them off differently somehow. Like, you know, kept everything like, like we were talking about earlier with the, the color choices for certain scenes. It's very, uh, you know, two colors being the two main colors and then a very small amount of a third color just to add some sort of differentiation um, I think it's a little bit thrown together in that in that way. Uh, the, the cityscape uh, is green acrylic, um, which means it doesn't change. It's always going to be green. Um, I think that's a bit of a miss too. It would have been better if it had possibly been like frosted clear and then with RGB GI underneath it so it could change color. That would have created a lot more uh, opportunity to create different moods night and day that kind of thing mm -hmm. um the shots look tight as well i think um the shot through to the uh captured pop um 
on the back left uh, and there's a drop target on the premium and LE. That looks like a really tight shot. The car is a like a, a bash toy. The suitcase is a bash toy. There's a Newton ball bash toy. There's a lot of bash toys. Yeah. And the shot to the right yep. of the car looks super tight as well. Um, the suitcase is like a big rectangular thing on the play field for a lot of the game. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't. You look at that. I don't. I don't. I don't get that. that part. Like, number one, isn't that going to get destroyed by balls? That's like, what, that's what I was thinking. Sh- yeah. It's a sharp edge. Like, I know it's a. I know it's a. It's got some flex in it, I think, because it's a bash toy. But it's still going to get destroyed. By, I'm sure of it. I, I can't work out how that's not going to get destroyed by balls. That bottom left yeah. corner, that's where it's going to get the maximum amount of kinetic energy transfer. So close to the flippers. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then, and then not only that, but, but like, okay, so the left-hand side is obviously the switch register that makes it pop open. But the bottom bit is just a flat nothing. So mm-hmm. shots to that are just, where are they going to go? Like probably down the right out lane, I guess. But um, it's just, I don't know, man. Like the design decisions, I just think are very weird. I think the toys are a bit weird. As I was saying earlier, I think cars and pinballs don't really work. Um, The amulet thing, I think, looks weird and kind of floating in space. Sure, it's, you know, really important in the John Wick universe and stuff, but effectively it's just like the hamburger in Pulp Fiction, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's just I, kind of this circular thing floating in the middle of nowhere. It just doesn't have any context. I, I believe me. you mean the Royale with cheese. The Royale with cheese. <laughs> yeah, which I quite like because it's silly, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the amulet's not trying to be silly. It's trying to be an amulet, That's right. you know, yeah. and it's just like, I don't know, man. It looks like a... a cheap party bag toy to me sorry yeah um so look overall ah so saving graces for me <laughs> the music sounds awesome okay yes so i love that about it, it sounds really really good uh, apparently it's a it's a new score so it's not mm-hmm. actually it's not actually the music from john wick but from what i heard it sounds great um and i think the cabinet artwork is like really, really good on the yeah. whole. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Particularly the LE. The LE is my favourite by far, um, which is good because I'm never going to get it. Um, and yeah, the back glasses. I, I'm not so keen on the premium side cab art. I think it's yeah. got John Wick in massive letters. Not so keen on that. The other two look great from top to bottom. All of the back glasses look great. It's pretty rare that I like all of, you know, I think it's probably one of the nicest cab sort of uh, artwork artworks that they've done uh, for ages, really. Um, so yeah, really happy about that too. But I got the feeling it's not going to shoot great. I'm, I'm feeling it's going to be a bit of a clunk first. So I want to point out one thing too. You said, Davey, and it's funny because, like you said, like 24, 48 hours before this revealed, there was a leak of the upper play fit like the, the upper third of John wick. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Ooh, I want to go see what people are saying on pin side. Cause I guarantee if I've seen this, mm-hmm. it's on pin side. So I go on to pin side and there it is. Yeah. And the funny part is before they're talking about it, they're fight. These people are fighting over what's cause I don't know if you know this, the rumor for the next two games are Metallica than Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And it's seriously like, you remember in Billy Madison where he's like, you know, Mortal Kombat's better. no, Street Fighter's better. He's like, or Donkey Kong. No, Mortal Kombat. You know what? You suck. <laughs> you, you know? That's what yeah. it felt like. So it's like, no, Metallica's awesome, and this is why. And Pokemon sucks. So Pokemon's <laughs> yeah. awesome. That's why. So this this photo drops right in the middle of that conversation, right? I'm like, oh, sweet. We're going to start you know, start talking John Wick. And it was that night. It went like, back oh, to Pokemon. No really... Yeah. Yeah, like, they're like, so back to Pokemon. And I'm like, what? Okay, let's give this like 12 hours. So I wake up in the morning. I go back to the photo. Same. Yeah. And it's still Metallica versus Pokemon. I'm like, ooh, that's not a good sign mm-hmm. when when leaked photos happen and no one cares. Like they're back to worrying about the next two titles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On to my actual thoughts of John Wick. Okay, uh, yeah. I agree with you guys. I think I think 
when I saw that crate on the bottom right, the the suitcase, I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this. Okay, first off, I want to give a shout out to Elliot Eisman. This is his very first, first design. Game. First yeah. game. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, He's been with Stern since mm-hmm. 2014. His very first game was WWE. Um, on, he's always been on the mechanical side of things, right? Because I th- now he I, is a mechanical engineer, right? Yes, like he does mechanical he not, engineering. So I, I, I will say yeah. that's part of me thinking I'm not the first person to think that may be destroyed because he should probably think of that because that's what yeah. mechanical engineers do, correct? Yeah, so and it's his honestly, first game, so I'm sorry for being critical. I just want to point that no, out. No, you're good. Because you're good. If I was listening to me being critical of my first game, I'd be very upset. So I just want to apologize for that. Please keep making games and make them awesome. Anyway, please continue, Josh. Looking at this layout, I I want to say it looks really great for a first outing. I I like the layout. Uh, a two flipper game. Pretty much has to be a fan layout. I don't know if you has can nine get shots. around that. A uh, two flipper yeah. game has nine shots, and you could argue maybe eleven if you count like the the you know the side shot, basically like the the C shot in Jurassic Park. You know, it's, it's, yeah. You know. Um, I think with what you have with with a fan layout, he's done an excellent job. Uh, what I like to see is being able to explore the whole play field closer shots to the flippers to be more dangerous but be more lucrative with points or forcing you to make hard decisions and i think you can do that with the amulet and the mm-hmm. the suitcase here on the pro the suitcase always stays up so it's more of like a stand up bank instead of a big crate on the playfield um i do find the the red circle area to be interesting where they've got a pot bumper that's kind of isolated with a sling in there um I think that's kind of a cool concept. I also noticed they showed that the ball can lock behind that drop target as well, creating a little mayhem in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, I mean, that pops pretty safe. Um, but I like it being isolated because in competition, a lot of people like to put the ball into the pops, gives them a little extra time to, to mess with the play field before they have to deal with juggling balls. Uh, with this this case, you're not getting that. You're, there's no way just to drop it into the pop and, and leave it there. I, I think that's going to be more controlled. I love... Tim Sexton making this dynamic AI. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is really cool. If if you haven't watched this, they talked about in the Sh- Zach Sharp interview on Kong's R Us. Tim Sexton talked about in the the presents video. So it's going to be tracking how you're playing this game, and it's going to notice which shots you're making, which ones you're leaning towards, things that you're staying away from. And it's going to force enemies to be blocking those areas. So you're going to have to make more shots to those areas that you're comfortable making to take down those enemies. And then in turn, they talked about, like, say there's two or three enemies blocking that ramp. If John Wick defeats those two or three on the screen, it's going to correspond with a video clip of him, you know, taking out two or three guys. So there's a lot into it. Uh, I do love this track progress. Like they're they've been really pushing over the last two titles as well with Jaws and Venom. Um, I think this game has an amazing amount of potential. Mm-hmm. I think if you look at it based solely on I'm playing pinball, I want to play for the code set. I I I really think this game is going to be a dark horse. I know like it's catching a lot of slack up front, but I I just think once these get on location. The code gets to a point where it feels very fleshed out. I think people are going to go, oh, crap, I actually do want to own this game, which makes me fear. I I really think this is going to be another Bond situation. With Mm -hmm. Bond, it released. No one really wanted it. The code was so barren. No one could get the visuals of it. The code was bad. The code was the the initial view of the code was terrible. But it was what? about? It was almost a year later Mm -hmm. when we had three other titles come out. And all of a sudden, distributors like, uh, I want bond. I couldn't give away bond and now I can't keep him in stock. Mm-hmm. So I really think, I don't know. I think if you're a John wick fan, you'll be happy with this game. Mm-hmm. I just, I think this is one of those games that are going to have to prove themselves, but yes. with Tim Sexton on code with, I don't want to say it's, it, it's not an easy layout, but it's, it's more forgiving. Is it's what a safe, it's say. a safer layout for a first game. The, a, a two flipper layout. That's by definition. A two flipper layout is probably the safest layout you can do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Medieval madness is a two flipper layout and it is awesome. Still and I game. think that's what I love about the, the team up here. Like, so if this is a safe game, mm-hmm. 
relatively safe. Uh, let's say the shots feel great. They're very predictable. Mm -hmm. Tim makes up for that with the code by saying, hey, you might feel safe making these shots and I'm going to make it harder as you play because I'm going to mm -hmm. learn with you. So I just, there's so much potential this game. I don't think we should be writing it off. I think mm -hmm. I, I, from first blush, yeah, it has no guns. Whoopty freaking do. Mm -hmm. Nor the sheriff's not on Jaws. And you know what? Jaws is every, he, he's in their tones. My house. He's in their tones. Yeah. Yes. It just, yeah. Uh, I think this game has so much potential and, and and that's the thing. Okay. I hadn't watched a single John Wick movie till Saturday mm -hmm. and I went through three. They're good. Like I like, I like a good action film by the end of the third one. I'm, I'm probably not gonna watch the fourth one for a little bit. Cause my, my brain just, yeah. it's, it's a little fried guys. It just, it is. <laughs> Holy There's crap. Amazing, Only watch I was, a thousand people getting shot. No. I was, yeah. I was sending around a scene. I think it was, it was linked to in the pin side thread, like just as a little animated gif or whatever, but I went and I found the scene or whatever. Um, it's in John Wick four, which is people say is arguably the least good of them, but this scene is just incredible. And it's him like from a top down perspective, basically just taking out bad guys like he does and stuff, but he's using like incendiary shotgun ammo to take everybody okay. out. And obviously, you know, most of it's done with CGI and stuff, but it's all like a one taker. Um, and it sort of just follows him from a top down perspective, you know, just, you know, shooting bad guys and getting holes blasted in walls. And honestly, like, it's such a, it's such a cool scene. Um, I'll forward it to you guys later, or maybe we can stick it in the comments later or whatever, but it's really, really worth watching. Um, I think even if you just type in John Wick for incendiary ammo, like it'll probably be the first thing that comes up on YouTube. But mm -hmm. it is, you know, you know when you see. So one of my favourite movies of all time is Children of Men. Um, you know, it's it's not you know hugely well known film or whatever. Okay, but, but one that's the one where they're not they're not having kids, right? Yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah, yeah and exactly. so, and so you so have this, preg this pregnant girl that they're trying to yeah. get somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, and there's a, there's a one taker at the end of that, which is just one of the most amazing scenes, I think, in sci-fi and action cinema. Um, and you know, the amazing thing about that film is that he never, he never, he never picks up a gun through the whole thing. You don't actually notice it, but he's just so focused on, um, you know, and it's a violent film, but he's so focused on protecting this one girl who has become pregnant as well, where nobody can be pregnant. Mm -hmm. um and getting her away that it just never sort of comes up um and uh but yeah anyway i, I was talking about john wick and moving on with children man. but yeah check out check out that scene in john wick 4 it's it's very 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 good okay and i'm gonna dovetail on what you said josh obviously people are concerned that there will be okay monsters didn't come out of the gate big okay ended up not being a huge seller uh, a few others, uh, probably I would say Led Zeppelin didn't come out of the gate strong. However, because it's Led Zeppelin, it's still selling. Um, which is a shocker to me, but you well, know what? Okay, it it's is not, what it it's is. not terrible. Okay. It's, it's not an awesome game, but it's not terrible. It's a functional game with an awesome soundtrack, but I'm going to put out a few games here that have a very similar, uh, had a very similar I guess deadpan release, right? Okay. Deadpool. How do you think it turned out for Deadpool? Yeah. Deadpool well, well. turned out to be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Like the first real, yeah, the, well. the first take ended up being really bad. Bond I, yeah. again, not like, okay. <laughs> if we're saying this is a bad release, Bond was equally bad. Okay. This may be even like a little bit more like people are snake bitten and saying, I'm just going to hold off and wait. But this uh, bond has turned out to be a great one. I'm also going to give you one other game and we're going to have to go back 10 years for this that had that cratered on release. Okay. The walking okay. dead. Do we get to guess? Oh, oh I, I just told you, sorry. The walking dead, <laughs> like the walking dead. What did you dead, say, Davey? It was the one he, uh, he, he uh, said, it can get, can we I, guess. I, can I, we I guess. blew it. I, I, I should just set this up. Okay. <laughs> I've got another one too. Stranger Things. Stranger yeah. Things. Stranger Things. The same thing. So there I've got are another one. Gar Guardians of the Guardians Galaxy. of the Galaxy. And so, that one came out. That one tanked bad. I don't think that one was ready to release when they showed that one. Yeah. It. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. So Walking Dead though. 
Walking Dead, absolutely. Like, do you think that people will take The Walking Dead today? Absolutely. I and mean, it's it's a great game. So there are ways of recovering from these bad releases. As long mm, as yeah. the, the, that is true, yeah. This doesn't that seem like true. a bad layout. So that that has it going for it. This has the code option, which Tim is mm. is a proven coder, and he'll be good. It also still looks great, and it it is a great theme. Yep. So th- this has the potential of really, uh, after this yeah, initial I, I bad launch, the, the, it could be good. The, the guns thing, like there's going to be a lot of people who are pissed off about that and will probably stick to their guns by not buying it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I like it. We'll stick to their guns by not, by not buying it because yeah. they've, they've come too far. Like, I mean, Carrie Hardy, you know, can't now turn around and, and buy the game. Can he after his, uh, after his rant? Oh, he, he, could, he could do a redemption just... video. He could do it. <laughs> I think he just it, did. He, he released one an hour ago and saying, let me be, let me be, uh, mm-hmm. let me set the record straight. So I haven't watched. We obviously we've been, yeah, we've been recording. So we yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that'll be interesting to, to see. Um, and, and there'll, there will be people who just won't do it for that reason, you know? Um, and, and that's fine. But, I'm certainly not in that camp. And if it turns into, you know, a great game and, you know, sales pick up and everybody's raving about it and stuff, like, yeah, it is It is a great-looking game. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, there's nothing, th- there's nothing that can't be turned around here, I don't think. Yeah. No, I agree. And this is just going to be one of those you have to weather storm. I, I'm interested to see how this pans out. Um, it's it's interesting development. I mean, even two weeks from now, the the live streams on Friday that could really help. Um, mm-hmm. I just I, I I feel bad because it's a really great development team. It's Elliot Eisman's first one, and I just I feel like we're focusing on the weirdest things with this game. Yeah. Uh, when when That's we should be focusing like pinball, on pinball, isn't it? Pinball. Yeah, someone yeah, like, no, weird, like right? Pinball to focus on weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Like a shark doesn't eat the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you are you, uh, are you going to make a mod for this that has John Wick eating the ball? Yes or no? Uh, yes. Yes. I've already yes. got one in production. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make it, everything eat the ball. Yes. I'm going to make the entire machine eat It'd the be ball. Awesome. There's going to be gun eating balls. You name it. Yeah. You know what? You should do that with Galactic Tank Force when the head comes down to make the tank. Yeah. It actually swallows the bomb and shoots it out of the cannon out of the, yeah. off the top. But, so. but that would require me to own Galactic Tank Force, and that's never going to happen. So. Unless someone uh, gives it to you. You can do it. <laughs> you, you know what? You, you can still make the mod. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott, going yeah. back to your, I would argue that Led Zeppelin is the worst Spike 2 game made. Yeah. <sighs> Mm, it still sells. It has a great sound. It still sells. It's it, but for me personally, I, I'll go on the record. Me personally, I think Led Zeppelin's the worst Spike Two game. Created. Well, it's a total fan layout, and don't even get me don't even get me started on that Hobbit flipper that is up there. That is because it is a useless <laughs> flipper. There's one shot from it, and it is limp. Okay, it is nearly impossible to hit that shot. I I think one of the the beauties of John Wick. Um, I think if you are someone that's looking to save a couple bucks, I really think the pro is the way to go on this. We've talked about the crate. I I don't know what the crate does. It's definitely something you're going right. to have to play to figure out, hey, this is worth it or not. But, I mean, between that, um, the car, it's cool that you can bash it from multiple angles. But really, I don't I don't know if it's worth it. Everything else is kind of on there. You right. know what I'm saying? It's just I mean, the physical, the... physical ball lock, isn't it? Yeah. But again, yeah. Uh, I mean, it'd be interesting to see on the pro, because obviously with that physical ball lock, when you go into multi-ball, it, it comes down into that pop region, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. They just sort of drop out into that pop region and then probably come out the bottom of it. Um, I think so it'd it be interesting to see where the, where the, because obviously it's a, it's a virtual ball lock on the pro. So yeah. what happens? Do they get launched you know, into that region somehow, maybe? A or? lot of players actually turn on just virtual locks anyway. I think it's similar so, to, we were talking about this earlier, it's the ball gets goes behind the drop target, the drop, drop mm-hmm. target holds it into place. Yeah. So Which you don't get three is, balls in there. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think a physical ball lock is it changes much in a, in a game. I, I truly don't care. The, I thought it was going to be a big deal 
for a lot of games, but it turns out that I rarely even notice it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, I do think when it's done, and I know a lot of people dislike uh, Godzilla Premium and LE uh, multi ball start with the balls on the roof and stuff, just because of the amount of time that it takes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, I, I think I think it's cool. Like mo- moments in pin, you know, like you know. Bride of Pinbot, oh my god, like physical ball lock of, you know, of all time, really, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and the way that her heartbeat starts, you know, as a as an intro to multi-ball is one of the best pinball moments of all time, I think. Um, so, you know, it's, it's those kind of things that stand the test of time and it's those are the things that we remember and we talk about, you know, years on, um, and a virtual ball lock is never going to do that. You know, yeah, that's true. Um, there could be other things, you know, like that a virtual ball lock will never do that. I don't think. You so know, I'm going to wrap this up. Go on. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just keeping talking. It's fine. <laughs> you know? yeah. we, we're just we're we're an hour, a little over an hour and a half, and so I want to I want to wrap this up. Um, if I have one request from Stern, uh, Scott pointed this out from John Wick One, and I think. You guys should spend the money for this. Get the rights to Marilyn Manson song killing strangers <laughs> just for the troll. Because Davy, if you've never heard the song, it's in the first movie, and okay. literally the lines of it is. We got guns. We got guns. And it's it's hilarious. So Stern, yeah. please for the troll, yeah. just just for the troll. Yeah. <laughs> and except, except for don't give any money to Marilyn Manson, he's a dirtbag. But yes, if you, if you can get the song without paying him any money, Absolutely. it'd be great. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But that that wraps up, Davey. If if you want people to get a hold of you, if you want people to buy your product, how, or how do they do? Or listen to that? your uh, listen to your uh, yeah, my, your yeah, stream podcast. your podcast. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it's called. Yeah. So uh, yeah, stumble or pinball. Um, so S T U M B L O R uh, pinball uh, dot com. That's where all my products are. Um, we don't sell on demand. We have lists, which just helps me. Uh, you know, we, we do have a big demand for things. So if everybody just ordered all at once, I'd probably have to go and hide somewhere because it'd just be too much. So we run lists. If you like the look of anything, you jump on the list, and then I contact you in a couple of months when when it's ready to go. Uh, the podcast is called In Before the Lock, um, and we do that fortnightly, and you can find us on YouTube and, and Twitch and all the usual places. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. It's been fun. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. And if you want to get a hold of us, we are Loser Kid Pinball Podcast at gmail.com. All the socials is just at Loser Kid Pinball. You put that after Facebook.com or X.com or Instagram. Uh, go ahead and check us out on YouTube. If you didn't know this, we are doing video now. Subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Uh, it, it helps us out in the long run. And you know what? Scott, give us give us our last words for the day. Uh, you need to buy the buoy of death. It is awesome. Totally get it. <laughs> <laughs>